Okay, so good afternoon. So we are happy that uh, Professor Bruno Klerks uh, from the Imperial College is now our guest. And I'm particularly interested in what are the current uh, research you're working in? Right, so in, in, in London um, I work on um, communication systems and a bit more specifically in wireless communication systems. So we design the future communication systems, wireless communications, um, and we try to understand how we use um, radio waves, so the wireless medium, um, to, make the, to make its best use for communication, but also future application like sensing and, and powering device. So essentially we try to understand how we can use the wireless infrastructure and its radio waves and, and the spectrum um, to its full potential for future uh, applications. And it's about understanding how you use wireless to convey information and at the same time power devices. And so this has application in numerous fields where we have a growing demand for sensors. Uh, we have a very large number of devices that we can expect in the future, like for ubiquitous sensing, for Internet of Things. Um, and those devices have to be powered and be completely autonomous. And so what we're looking at is how we can really use radio waves to enable this very large number of applications like um, smart homes, like uh, in, in smart agriculture, for instance, um, in ubiquitous sensing in, um, in smart cities. Um, so there are numerous applications that we're not even aware of, but we actually develop the underpinning technology in order for people to actually uh, come up with uh, numerous applications uh, later on. So you're not only a professor at Imperial College in London, but recently you also got uh, the position of the Chief Technology Officer at Silicon Austria Labs here in Villach, Graz and uh, in Linz. So what are the technologies you're working here at SAI? Right, so at Silicon Austria Labs we, we work on, uh, I would say, electronic-based systems. And so this is a much wider field than just the wireless communication and signal processing that I mentioned before. Um, Electronic-based systems is really how we use electronics to build the systems of the future. And this can cover power electronics, it can cover embedded systems, it can cover in artificial intelligence, so making systems intelligent. It covers obviously wireless systems, so how you make intelligent wireless systems for sensing applications, for communications, um, but also how you design the components. And so that means actually how you design, for instance, the tiny components that actually are used to build up those systems. Okay, so you work with many scientists and with many engineers. So what are the, the typical competencies you're looking for when you collaborate with, with these people? Uh, what, what are the, the competen competencies you're looking for? Right, so, so all our scientists, so we currently have 250 scientists at Silicon Austria Labs. Um, they come from a diverse uh, field of expertise, but electronic uh, and electrical engineering is really one key uh, foundation, along with some aspects of physics, look, material scientists, uh, physics, uh, we even have uh, mathematicians as well. Um, and all those people work together because you need all those expertise coming from artificial intelligence, from electronic systems, from communication, uh, and from um, physics in order to build these very complex systems of, of the futures. And so all those expertise uh, are brought together, are fusioned in order to come up with the most efficient uh, systems of the futures. Okay, so here in Klangfurt we offer a, a degree program in information and communications engineering. Uh, and since you're also from communications engineering, what are the particular uh, competences in this field of studies? In that field, to design information and computer uh, and, and communication uh, systems, you need again to have people with different expertise ranging from a really component level to understand how you build the fundamental building blocks of, of communication information systems, all the way up to how you actually have systems interacting with each other. Um, and those leads to different expertise that we find in computer science and in electronic engineering. 
Okay, so it seems that there is a whole uh, set of different disciplines you're working with uh, and, and different fields of research you're looking at. Uh, so how can young people provide all these different uh, uh, competences in, in a single person? So is this possible at all or how, how, does, this, how does this work? Well, it, it would be difficult for anybody to be expert in all those fields, obviously. Um, right, myself, um, I, I chose uh, engineering because I really loved math and physics, and I really wanted to use this uh, and, and, and create something that is useful for, for future generation. And so this is why I really chose engineering. But I really chose electronic engineering and communication and information aspect because I was really um, fascinated by the fact that with radio waves, you can do so many things. And what you can do is you really create algorithms, so that's really based on mathematical principles, and convert those mathematical principles into algorithms, actually then implement it into chips, into your handphone uh, or smartphone, into any system that are used by billions of people worldwide. Um, and so this is what I have done in my career. And for instance, when I did my studies as an electronic engineer, then I did a PhD. Um, I really create some of the algorithms that are no, nowadays all people worldwide use in their smartphones. So this is actually a very, um, very enriching experience in the sense that you really see the, the use of your hard work uh, over the years. And this is um, very stimulating because there is not only a scientific challenge, you see that actually there is a use by the society. And this is what at the end of the day what those studies enables you to do is really to challenge yourself intellectually, but for the purpose of society. Okay, okay. I think this is, a very, this is a very nice statement because what you mentioned is that uh, work in um, technology um, pervades into almost every aspect of our daily life. Uh, and the hope is that technology can also uh, help to provide solutions for our grand challenges. What, what is your opinion about how technology, in particular your work you are, uh, you are doing, can provide solutions for our grand challenges? Right, so electronics in, in general is really underpinning all possible applications we have nowadays in our modern societies. Whether we're talking about climate change, we're talking about health systems, electronics is so fundamental building blocks to, um, to tackle those challenges. Um, if you take the progress in medicine nowadays, it's primarily thanks to actually the progress of, of engineering and technology in those fields. And this comes, for instance, from progress in MRI, progress in DNA sequencing, all those activities and are always relate to fundamental um, uh, or to a great extent, extent to, to electronic systems. Um, for your new MRI is really doing image processing. And so this is all fields of, of electronics and information and communication. And, um, and if you go for um, climate change, a lot of the problems also relating to how you make all those systems more and more efficient, energy efficient. So how you use the least amount of energy to do a maximum amount of things. And this is really a, a core problem in modern societies is how you can maintain growth, but at the same time do it in the most efficient way, energy efficient way. And this is what we're doing when we do, for instance, our uh, activities in power electronics is really finding most efficient way to use energy for application like in uh, automotive, uh, uh, autonomous driving, for instance. Um, or and there can be many, many applications like this. Given your experience in, in the engineering domain, uh, can you comment on the career chances of graduates on the program of information and communication engineering uh, from the University of Klagenfurt? Right, so, so your program starts with a bachelor degree uh, in German and then continues with a master degree in, 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 in English. Uh, and I think this forms essential basis essentially to uh, to create a very international environment so that enables the University of Klagenfurt to attract international students but also to educate more local and Austrian students to a 
to a more um, international environment. And that helps graduates essentially to find possibilities, not only locally in Klagenfurt or in Austria, but also internationally, because they will be naturally educated in a very international environment.